Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have here this morning as we open your word together. We invite your spirit to direct our minds, to teach us, and we pray, Lord, that uh, the things we study will be meaningful and purposeful in our lives. We're thankful for what you've been showing us in Daniel chapter 11, and we ask for your continued guidance in these studies. We pray for each person. You know the struggles we face each day, uh, the challenges of living in this world of sin and our own natures. And so we submit our hearts to you. We ask for forgiveness that you can change us from the inside out. Be with us now through thy spirit. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So just before the study, um, Jeff asked a question regarding the word iteration. And that's, uh, you can see there in the center of the screen there for uh, H3588, certainly. And that has this word yet, 5750, which means an iteration. And that word is the same word that says within 60 and five years shall Ephraim be broken. That word within and the word yet here, uh, these are the same words. And within is probably not the best way to translate that. So we know that 65 year prophecy, it's this word odd. It means going around or a continuance still yet again besides. It can be a continuance or persistence. It can be an addition or repetition. So I'm taking it here as a repetition. So just to, to clarify this point, because I, I think it's, it's an important point. So it's going to talk about um, this history here of Octavian and Anthony, where they, it shall be in the kings, these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, both these kings' hearts, and they shall speak lies at one table, form false alliances, right? But it shall not prosper. Now we know that um, in the verses before 25 and 26, it's going to cover the battle of Actium. And that's going to be the end of Egypt. And then it's it's going to go back to Octavian and Anthony's, Anthony's um, alliance. And it's going to say that this is a type for when it says for yet, or it will be repeated at the end, which shall be at the time appointed. So we take the end and the time appointed to refer to the period of time from February 15th, 1798 to uh, the end of the prophetic periods, which are going to end October 22nd, 1844. So it's just saying that this history here in connection with what happens with this alliance between Octavian and Antony, that it would not last, that it's typifying something that's going to happen at the end of the world. And if we think about what happened with 1798, France is the power that put the papacy upon the throne of the earth, correct? In 538. Would we agree with that statement? Yes. Okay. And it's going to be France that's then going to remove them from the throne of the earth, right? It's going to take the Pope captive. So you can see here that this alliance does not stand. So it says it's going to be um, at the time appointed. So it's going to talk about the end of the prophetic periods, October 22nd, 1844. Now we, we match that in our history to the Sunday law. Then shall he, the king of the north, return into his land with great riches. So that's going to be uh, with after the battle of, of Actium and then the conquering of Egypt. And then pagan Rome's heart shall be against the Holy Covenant. So the next thing that's going to happen is that after Rome uh, gets Egypt, it's going to grow, its empire is going to grow, but also it's going to persecute God's people, right? So that's going to be pagan Rome, right? So that's what it, when he says he shall do, I crossed out exploits, but this is just his persecution, and he's going to return into his own land. So he's going to persecute. He's going to return into his own land. And then it says, at the time appointed. Now, we would say normally that's October 22nd, 1844. But here in this case, it's now pointing to our history because this is this is the repetition of that history. 
he, the papacy, the USA, the king of the north, shall return and come toward the south, but it shall not be as the former. So in the former, they do come towards the south, right? That is the Battle of Actium. Uh, the king of the north is going to defeat the king of the south. So, so it's going to be like that, right? The same thing. The king of the north is going to defeat the king of the south in 1989. Uh, but it shall not be as the former. And the way that it's not as the former is it's actually not dealing with the literal north and the literal south, right? Or as the latter. Now, the latter is the fall of the Western Roman Empire. At least that's how we've we've taken it at this point. And we, we were discussing yesterday how it's not the same. So, Dwight, you just showed up. Um, so we were discussing this this idea about um, this repeat of history. That is that word yet, the iteration. So I'm just going to go back and quickly explain that. Right. So it says, for yet um, the end shall be at the time appointed. And I'm saying that word yet means that this is going to be repeated. So it's going to take all of this alliance that happened in the Battle of Actium, and it just like France put... Um, the papacy on the throne of the earth in 538. It's going to remove them in 1798. And so it's saying that this history is going to be repeated. That is what happens at the time of the end in 1798 is going to be repeated. And then it's going to go back and talk about uh, that history after the Battle of Actium and after the persecution of the Christians, right? Being against the Holy Covenant. Rome returns into its own land. Now, so I guess the, the controversial part here is that when it says at the time appointed, the papacy in the U.S., the king of the north in November 9th, 1989, shall return and come towards the south. So I'm saying that this is this is the king of the north against the king of the south. So it can't be 1798. At least that's that's the conclusion I came to, that it must be 1989. And, and we couldn't say, well. The king of the north comes against the king of the south, and it's not like what happened in Egypt in the sense that, you know, it's the south and north are reversed or anything like that. Right. It has to be the king of the north coming against the king of the south does not happen in 1798. It does happen in 1989. And so what I'm saying is that when it talks about what happens in 1798 is going to be repeated, that this is now describing when it's going to be repeated. But it says it will not be as the former. So the former is going to be when the king of the north defeated the king of the south in 30 BC. And we're saying that that is different because it's not the literal king of the north and the literal king of the south. It's actually spiritual, not literal. So that we can agree on, right? That makes sense? Logical. Okay. Now when it says as the latter, so we have we have taken the latter as to be what's going to be talked about next. That is, that's going to be the ships of Kittim coming in and conquering Western Rome. So we're saying that the latter is the next thing that's going to be talked about because it's already talked about the Battle of Actium. Now, we could have said, well, maybe the latter is, you know, 1798. So that is another possibility, but the latter isn't referring to what's going to be mentioned next. And we had considered that, but I've taken that the latter is, is what's going to happen next in verse 30, right? So, so, so if it's not, if it's the same as, because it is the same, it's a repeat of something. This history is being repeated. And this is the history of November 9th, 1989 that it's talking about. It has characteristics similar to the, the Battle of Actium. It's the north against the south. But it's it's not literally the north and not literally the south. And then it's it's like the fall of Western Rome, but it's also not like the fall of Western Rome. And that's the part that we haven't been able to say, why is it not like the latter? What is it that differs? Now, in the latter... It's going to be the ships of Kittim, that's these Germanic tribal invasions, that come against Western Rome. 
Therefore, he shall be grieved and return and have indignation, uh, the 1260 years of the daily, against the Holy Covenant. So it's going to deal with that indignation. That's what we would call the first part of the indignation. So paganism is persecuting God's people in that history. And so shall he do, right? And and we have that so shall he do earlier in verse 28. And he shall do, right? So this has to do with his persecution. And he, pagan Rome, shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So the return we place is 410 AD. That's in the response to uh, these Germanic invasions. And then he has intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. And, and we decided that that was uh, apostate Christianity. So these are the negotiations that are going to be going on with, with pagan Rome in adopting Christianity. Okay. So, so that's going to happen in that period of time. And then when we get to uh, verse 31, an arm shall stand on his part. This is going to be the baptism of Clovis in 508. So there's, there's a logical consistency through this. The thing that we have to, we have to try to understand is it, it shall not be as the former or as the latter. So in what way is it not as the latter? So we, we had a suggestion as something to do with the fact that it's not the papacy itself or, or in this case, Rome being an example of the papacy, but it's going to be uh, the United States that brings in the Sunday law. But I don't know if that's the best way to place to, to describe it. So any discussion on that? I'm just going to look here at the well, Hebrew. The first Sunday law, 321, was Rome. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have Constantine's 20 law, uh, Sunday law in 321. Uh, we also have a Sunday law in 538. The latter day, yeah, the latter day is a B. Right. So we have a Sunday law in 538 as well. The United States represents Rome. Part of Rome. Yeah, so, so when we're dealing with the fall of Western Rome here, and it says it's not going to be as the former, so we understand the Egypt part, or as the latter. Now, we put here, well, that is, the word latter means Western, right? That's what the word latter literally means. And I'm not sure why, how, how that they use the word Western to describe latter. I guess probably that's the later part of the day, you know, you got the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so that's the latter. That could be where they get the idea of of using that word to refer to something that comes after, maybe, right? But it does mean Western. And so we're saying that this addresses Western Rome, not just because of the word latter, but because of what's the context here. So then it says, um, in which the ships of Kittim shall come against him. So the power that's that's coming here is a Germanic power coming against Western Rome. Now here we're dealing with the papacy and the United States coming against the king of the north, or, or which is the king of the north coming against the king of the south. So in this case, it's not really uh, the king of the the south, the the north coming against the king of the south. Right. So it's typifying it, but maybe the way that it's not as the latter is it's not, there isn't this, um, a one to one equivalence of these kingdoms in that same way that this is an outside power that causes the fall of Rome. So, so the fall of, of Western Rome is typifying the fall of the Soviet Union. Now there are some similarities between uh, Rome and the Soviet Union in that uh, the Soviet Union is divided up and, and we can see that happens with Rome itself. So it's going to be divided up into these different kingdoms. And maybe that's what, what the point is that it, it's similar in that way, but it's not the same powers. Does that make sense? Well, okay. In dealing with this from Daniel 1129, yeah. The the point that you're you're addressing, especially where we're we're looking at the former or as the latter. Yeah. We have 
this Hebrew word Rishon, which is a derivative of Hebrew seven two two one. Yeah, yeah, and and well, it's related to the word um, Rosh, which okay. is first or chief or head, right? Right. Now, making use of the rule of first mention. Well, that's going to be that. Really, it's the first word in the Bible. If you, if you actually look at the root word here, because the first word in the Bible is Bereshit. And that's just but, another word, right? But the Rishon, mm-hmm. the first time it comes up is Genesis 8.13. Okay. So in Genesis 8.13, that's going to be uh, dealing with uh, Noah, right? Okay. And it came to pass in the 600th and first year, in the first month, first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Is that the verse? Okay, that's the verse. And it's the first month. Okay, but right. Yeah. As we're looking at this, two different words are being used for first. Yeah, and that's and, and there's a good reason why. Okay. Right. Because the one first, Ichad, first day of the month, is just the number one. The other first means the beginning. Right. Right. So one is the beginning of the month on the first day is really right. Because you and and in some ways you could even say it's the beginning of 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 the year because it's it's referring to Noah's six hundred and first uh birthday right so so it's at the beginning of his 601st year on the first day of the month does this have a symbolic presence for us since there in english would be three firsts being listed well uh, well i mean i don't know I, I mean the thing i would say is it's daniel 8 or genesis 8:13 which gives us this uh Fibonacci sequence, right? That we have in Daniel 8, 13. Okay. Right. Palmanai, right. So it's a symbol of Palmanai. Eight notes to an octave in a diatonic scale, 13 notes to an octave in a chromatic scale, right? So it's just part of God's design. It's the fingerprint. And here it's going to be uh, used in connection with uh, the flood and dealing with Noah's 601st year. I don't know if I would take the first, the three firsts as, as, as a symbol here. I mean, you're saying like 111? No. Okay. I don't know then what. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to relate this back to the three angels message. Yeah. I don't know if I would do that. Okay. So but, uh, what I would say here is that, um, this is connected to Palmoni. So this verse by itself is important, though I don't know if I would connect it here to what we're doing in Daniel chapter 11 specifically. Well, what I, what I'm, it's not really the first mention because this word, I mean, because you, you've you've taken one of the other because, you know, you have Bereshit, you got Bishan, you got Rosh. All of these are based upon, well, the one, the, the root is Rosh, right? And And that word, the first form it shows up in, is Rashid, right, in the beginning, Be Rashid, the B at the end means in the beginning, which is the first verse of the Bible, which is Genesis 1 1, right? So, so it's just a symbol of the first day of the first month, is what I would look at as the symbol, not so much the three angels' messages with the three firsts. Well, what, what, what I'm trying to drive at here, mm-hmm. your point is accepted that this would be the the word first or the word beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come to this with the latter. Yeah. So 314. 314. Mm -hmm. Akaron. Yeah. Akaron. Which, again, is a derivative of, of Hebrew 309, which can mean hinder or it can also be Western as they are facing east. Yeah. So could we apply this with Daniel 1129 
to say, but it shall not be as the first or as the Western. Well, that's what I'm saying is, is, is the Western. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying is it's related to the Western and we're dealing with Western Rome. But are we also dealing with the situation with the literal armies of Rome today because they are coming from the West? No. Okay. No. So, so first we interpret it historically and then we apply the history and the repeat of history. So in, in this context, it's just saying that what happens at the end of the world in 1989, right, which is this time appointed that's referred to in verse 29, that it's going to have characteristics that are similar to, to what happened with Egypt. That is, the fall of Egypt is a battle between the north and the south, and we're going to have a battle between the north and the south. But it's not going to be literally the north and the south. It's going to be figuratively the north and the south. Because definitely, you know, to try to call the Soviet Union the South, it's pretty North. And, and, and to call the papacy in the United States of the King of the North, well, it's a lot more South. Right. So, so obviously it's not talking about that in a literal sense. And they're also not occupying those territories of Turkey and Egypt. So we're saying it's typifying that because it's going to be the King of the North coming against the King of the South, but not literally. So that's why it shall not be as the former. So it's describing it, but there's a characteristic that's different. And it says, or as the latter. Now, the latter would be referring to what's going to happen in verse 30. That's the fall of Rome. So, I mean, we could even say it's not, it shall not be as the first and the last. Right. I mean, it's another way we could say it, the former and the latter. We could just say first and last. But it's not talking about that principle of first and last, right? It's just saying that we have these two different events. They're both typifying what's going to happen in 1989, but there are ways in which they don't typify. And so when we look at verse 30, for the ships of Kittim shall come against him. So these are, you know, this, what's going to happen in, in that history in the, the early uh, 400s, Right. Uh, they shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved in return. That's going to be 410. And have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So, so this is going to be the first end of the indignation, which is paganism persecuting God's people in this history. That's why so shall he do. That's what it's referring to. Now it says he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So apostate Christianity is going to have intelligence with paganism, pagan Rome. And in so doing, we're going to have this transition from pagan Rome to papal Rome. So the question is, how is it not the same as this? That is, how is what happens in 1989 not the same as what has happened with the fall of, of the Roman Empire. And so far, we can see all the parallels, but we can't see how it's not that way. Okay, makes sense? Now, maybe there's something with, wrong with how we're reading the verse itself. Now, some different translations translate this, this differently. Now, some translations are, you know, they're not generally reliable translations, but, the, you know, the paraphrases. One says, at the time fixed, he'll come back and come into the south, but in the latter time, it will not be as it was before. So that's one way they translate the Hebrew. Uh, this other one says, this is Bishop's Bible, so this is before the King James. It says, at the time appointed, he shall come again and go toward the south, but the last shall not be as the first. And I actually kind of like that translation better than what I see in the King James. And, and this is actually the really common way in which it's translated by a lot of the old translations. Did Apocrypha mention anything about that? Who? who? What's that? Apocrypha. Does that mention anything about that? No, 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 no. Uh, but the thing that I would say is, see, that's how I would translate it. When I look at the Hebrew, 
um, because I spent a bit of time looking at this. And so in trying to take what the King James says, I can't find how these events are not like the latter event, right? Now, the thing is, it talks about the former and the latter. So the thing I like about that is that it's going to then talk about what I would consider to be the latter, right? That is the fall of Western Rome. But but there's another way uh, to translate it. I mean, see, they're taking it shall not be as the former or not as the latter, right? But that's not necessarily uh, correct in Hebrew. That I can't, I can't just say because it says not, and then, and then I have two things that both of them are not. So what I think is it says that the latter shall not be as the former. I think that makes more sense in Hebrew. And, and, and that's actually the most common way it's translated. Now, there are a lot other translations shall did not be like the former or the latter. And there's ones that says the latter shall not be like the former. And, and I think the lat, the latter one is, uh, bad, better where the latter shall not be like the former. And that's how bishops translates it. The last shall not be as the first. Sounds like that would make more sense. Well, yeah, it actually makes more sense and it makes more sense in Hebrew. Right. So I'm not saying the other way is is certainly wrong but you know when i look at the hebrew here i don't see how sentence structure uh allows for that so it's kind of confusing real confusing yeah because it's just shall not be so in in hebrew just velo uh, techeya that's that's not be and then it has um so it's got the article adjective, uh, feminine singular, absolute, uh, former, and then it has, um, the exact same form, uh, as the latter or the western or the behind. So, so it, it, it's very, to me, I would have translated this that it shall not be as, um, that the former shall not be or the latter shall not be as the former. The first shall not be as the last. Or oh, wait, yeah, the, the last shall not be as the first. That's the way I would do it. So that's the way I would have translated it. I'm, but I'm not saying that this is wrong. I'm just saying that that's another alternate translation. So the latter shall not be as the former. And that makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, even just uh, structurally and contextually, so I don't know what people think about that. I mean, I'm usually, you know, a bit reluctant to just say, well, King James is wrong and how it translated this year. Now, now it is interesting that other commentaries um, that don't have the position that we do, when they look at when it talks about uh, the latter, they actually refer it to Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, right? So, so the way that they're looking at this um, is, is a little bit different, but uh, they're seeing that there is a reference to those other verses. So that's why we say at the time appointed, this would be the latter in that in, if they are doing it in this way, what they would be saying is that the latter, that is what's going to happen in 1989, if, if we are going to make our application, uh, is not going to be as it was in 1798. Would that make sense? That here, so it's going to be talking about what happens in 1989 because it says this history is going to be repeated, right? So maybe the way that we would look at this is we would just say that, that this isn't talking about, uh, the former as being the fall of Egypt. That here the former would have to be 1798 and the latter would be 1989. So that would be that would be how we would uh, have to translate that. So so I'm going to put that in here just as an option and we, something that we can consider. So a completely different way to look at this is I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to leave that there. 
I'm going to put this in here. Let me give it a different, uh, put it in here as an option. So the time appointed, right? This is papacy, the USA team shall return and come toward the south. But it shall not be as the former. Um, so if we did that, it'd be 1798. That's one way we could look at it. Or we could put, we could put Actium in there. Let me see here. So we could put that, or as the latter, then we would put here 1798. Okay, that's how I do it. So we're saying that the former is the fall of Egypt. The latter is 1798, not the fall of Rome. Or, so that's one way of doing it. Another way, I don't know why I did that. And then we have, or we could have this. So another way of deciding on this. Okay, so we're going to, oh, I didn't want that way. So this is this is going to be the most different of them. So that then we're going to say that the latter. So the latter is going to be 1989. So we'd have to go here. We're going to arrange the order of the sentence. The latter 1989 shall not be as the former, and the former being 1798. So that's another way of looking at it. So we got we get basically three different options. So what do we think about this? You can see them there. So our original way that the latter is just referring to the fall of Western Rome and that 1989 is similar to the fall of Egypt and the fall of Western Rome, but it's also different. Or the former is the fall of Egypt, the latter is 1798. So that's another option because it's saying 1989 is like the fall of Egypt because it's a battle against the king of the north and the king of the south, but it's not literal. But it's going to be different than 1798 in that it's not the king of the south defeating the, the king of the north. It's the king of the north defeating the king of the south. Or that it is, but the latter shall not be as the former, the latter being the one that they're referring to, the time appointed, the latter time appointed, 1989, shall not be as the former, that is the time appointed and time of the end. In 1798. Okay, so we have three different options. Does that make sense? That that these these options are all viable to some degree. To some degree, yes. Okay, right. So they're all viable to some. They're not all correct. I think we can agree on that. So we've got these other ways of looking at it. So how are we going to decide between these? So the problem with the first one that we have is. But if this is describing the fall of Western Rome, there are some good things. One is the fall of Western Rome is what's going to be described next. Okay. And the Battle of Actium is the former and the fall of Western Rome is the latter. The problem is we can't figure out how 1989 is different than the fall of Western Rome. We can see how it's the same, but there's not a real clear reason why they would say it's not as the latter, right? Because it, it's pretty clear that it's that these two histories are typifying what's happening, if if this is the case. But I'm not sure how the latter one, the fall of Western Rome, what characteristic we would see that's different that would be that would be clearly different. Why it's not like the latter, right? So so if we had some really good reason, I would still prefer to keep that version. Now, the middle one I like quite a bit. Um, it keeps the, the King James, right? But it just says, well, we're going to have this time appointed in November 9th, 1989. It's going to be a battle between the North and the South, right? But But not like in Egypt, because that was dealing with the literal North and South. Or as what happens in 1798, because that's going to be the South defeating the King of the North. So they're similar, but one is, the differences are, one is symbolic and one is, one is literal. So we have a literal symbolic difference. And we also have the fact that the powers are switched. And that is logical, right? Why they would bring that up, that it's not as the latter. But it's not like in 1798, because in 1798 was the king of the south defeating the king of the north, Daniel 11, verse 48. So it's not going to be like that in that way, okay? 
Or the other option is that the latter shall not be as the former. So the latter would be 1989, the former would be 1798. That means it's not addressing in this verse uh, the Battle of Actium and the fall of Egypt or um, the fall of Western Rome, right? In the second one, it's not addressing the fall of Western Rome specifically. But we can see that it still follows that what happens with the fall of Western Rome is typifying what's happening at the end, right? Because this is going to be the fall of Western Rome, the setting up of the papacy. So how, how do we decide between these three different interpretations? I'm going to do this way too. Any comments on that? So nobody got any thoughts about this? I mean, I could repeat myself, say it all over. We understand the three different options, right? It takes some investigating uh, with other scriptures to sort this out. Well, the thing, all of them are viable. That is, there isn't one that jumps out at me and says, this is wrong. All, all three of them are possibilities. Yeah, possibilities. Just, you know, we could say some are stronger than others. They, they all have their reasons why we would use them. There isn't really much against any of them as they stand on their own. You know, I, you know, if somebody had, had done this document and they, they gave me just one of these, I wouldn't say, well, that's completely wrong. That can't be, right? They all can be. And, and none of them, you know, negate what's going to follow then with the fall of, of Rome being next. It's, it's there next. It's going to be talked about. In verse 29, it's going to be, be specifically referred to as, as the latter. Right. If we if we're going to take it as the fall of Western Rome, that's what the latter is. But there's no problem saying that the latter is 1798 and that the former is the Battle of Actium. And there's also no problem with saying, well, the former is 1798 and the latter is not, which is 1989, isn't going to be like uh, the former in some particular way. So we have a reason. And we do kind of have a reason how it's not like the latter, but it's not, it's not a reason. So the problem with the first one is it's not a reason that naturally results of why it should be mentioned. Why would you say it's, it's not as the former? I can understand why they're saying it's not like what happened with literal king of the north and the king of the south, but I can't see why they would say, well, it's not like the latter. Like they wouldn't need to say that, right? Because Mostly it's like the latter. And, and there's a real specific reason why it's not like the former, why we need to know that. Unless there's some real specific reason as why it's not as the latter as well, then I would have a hard time supporting that first, first example. The second one, uh, the strength is that it retains the King James and, and the former is going to be what it just talked about. And the latter, is the time appointed that had been mentioned earlier in verse, was it verse 27, uh, that we marked as 1798. And so, so it says that those things are similar, but it's not going to be like in 1798. It's going to be like the king of the north defeating the king of the south. That's what we had in Actium. It's going to be like that, right? It's, it's not going to be like it in the sense that it's not literal. But also, it's not going to be the same in that in this case, it's it's in 1798, it's going to be the king of the south defeating the king of the north. So it's not going to. And so that would have a really good reason why it's not as the latter. So 1989 is not like 1798. In the last one, the time appointed again, we're going to have it is November 9th, 1989. Right. So that that doesn't change. But then it says. But the latter, that is 1989, is the one that's the latter. It shall not be as the former, the former referring to 1798. So there's things I like about this one. There's things I like about each one of them. So how could we resolve this? I mean, it, we've looked at all this information. We find that all three are consistent. Would there be something that would have one of these interpretations as a better interpretation? Now, I like the Hebrew better in the last one, but the latter shall not be as the former. That makes more sense. But I have no problem with the second one. 
because it's, it's already talked about the fall of Egypt and it's, you know, that that's, you know, that's dealing with 1798, right? Because when we go back here, right, where it talks about, uh, yeah, both these kings shall be to do mischief, be both the, and both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end, so that's going to be verse uh, 28, but the end shall be, shall be at the time appointed. I think, no, that's verse 27. Then verse 28 starts, then shall he return. Okay. So it's in verse 27 that we have that the end shall be at the time appointed. So we, we say that that's the prophetic periods. So if that's the case, then this is, um, this, this is going to be the former in this one, 1798. In this one, 1798 is called the latter. So I, to me, it's more consistent with this one. If we understand that, that in verse 27, it's talking about at the time appointed. So we have a former time appointed. That's going to be the former one, 1798. And the latter one's going to be the one in verse 29 at the time appointed where the king of the north comes against the king of the south. So I like this third one. I think it's, it's the most consistent in my mind, whether my mind matters or not. But they're all they're all viable. Now the problem here would then be when we go into verse thirty. So, so he's going to say in verse twenty nine that there's going to be this time appointed in nineteen eighty nine because he shall return. So this return is what's being talked about is the fact that this is going to be repeated. So it's it's he's going to return. Shall come toward the south, right? So the United States and the papacy against the USSR. But the, but this time. It shall not be as the former. That is, this time, and the former here being the first time, which is 1798, and the last, the latter time being 1989. Now then it's going to say, in which. So now it's going to go to the fall of Rome. And it's going to make a parallel between what happens in 1989 and what happens with the fall of Rome just as it did with what happened with the Battle of Actium. So so this verse isn't particularly connecting these two, which in our first interpretation it is. So it says, in which the ships of Kittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So now it's saying that what has happened with the fall of Rome, that there is this, same type of returning, and just like the 1260 years of paganism, there's this persecution that's going to happen towards Christianity, towards the truth. So shall he do. He, pagan Rome, shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant, apostate Christianity. So, and then we have an arm shall stand on his part. Now, we haven't done the present truth application of these verses yet. Right. So now we're going to have the rise of the papacy. So we know that this is still typifying what he's talking about earlier. So it doesn't it doesn't flow as smoothly. um, Except that we could look at this verse 29 is almost parenthetical. To what he's discussing earlier, that is, it's it's answering the time appointed, which is going to be uh, not at the end of the prophetic periods but is going to be a repeat of it. So, so it doesn't flow quite the same, but it's still not, not a problem to have a, a verse that's parenthetical, that's addressing specific history. So then it's going to say, so if, if we, we looked at this, so we've got pagan heart, uh, pagan Rome's heart shall be against the Holy Covenant, and in which, right, which I put there, uh, just bow would mean more in, not for, is uh or boo actually is not numbered or translated in strong's best translated is in which the ships of kittim shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against uh which is the daily against the holy covenant so shall he do he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant right so so this is continuing this description of pagan rome that we have in verse 28 so this would make verse 29 parenthetical. 
Does that make sense? Because what's what's mentioned in verse 20, 28 is is Rome returns its to to its own land after it does some persecution. Then persecution is going to come against Rome, right? The ships of Kittim. And now Rome is going to have to respond to this. It's going to be more returning. And it's going to continue to persecute God's people. And, and, and then he's not just going to persecute. He's going to have intelligence with those that have, uh, forsaken the Holy Covenant. So the way that pagan Rome, you know, wins this sort of situation where it's being, you know, destroyed, right? It's going to pass on its characteristics to this apostate Christian power. So Rome's going to be taken over by the Germanic invasions, right? And then these, this part of Western Rome that's been conquered is going to support the papacy. It's going to provide the military might for setting up the papacy on the throne of the earth. So, so what should we do here? Should we try to find out the parallel to our time here in the, the present truth application? Oh. Now here, when we take this verse and we take it out parenthetically, it is actually just describing the present truth history. That is, we can't take what well, we could. I mean, we, we obviously parallel it to lots of different things. So, you know, we could pr- compare November 9th to uh, November 9th, 2019. And we could have some kind of internal application of this. But this is a verse that actually is telling us that all of this history is going to be fulfilled at the end of time in this this line that we have from November 9th, 1989. So a present truth application of it isn't necessary because it is a present truth application. Does that make sense? Are people following what I'm doing here? I'm trying. So what do you need? Talk to me so that I can understand what what your thought process is. Maybe I can help. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. So. Okay. Well, can you think out loud? Of, I'm trying to. <laughs> well, can you repeat back to me what you think I've said about the three different interpretations, the three pops possibilities of verse 29? It's almost like we're trying to cover three octaves at once. Okay. That's well, kind of hard. Go ahead. Well, could we argue that all three are correct? I'm not disagreeing. All three of them have elements that are correct. Right. So that, you know, now that seems kind of odd, you know, but we've done that with other verses, right? The one that talks about the three, the times, even for a time. And we found that we had two different periods, two different ways we could interpret the word, uh, you know, it be, you know, from the or against. Right, the the fortresses, uh, the strongholds, from or against the strongholds, even for a time. So we had two different, and we agreed that both were correct. But is there some way in which we can we can address these? Okay. So while while we're thinking about this a little bit, I'm, I'm just going to change gears and and talk about something that uh, Iran and I were talking about prior to the study, because um, we had mentioned uh, yesterday about March 11th, 2020. And uh, March 11th, 2020, the significance of it is, uh, and I'm just going to put it in here, make sure I got this here. So that's going to be the date in which they declare the pandemic in, in the U.S. or worldwide or who? U.S. So in the U.S., it's going to be March 11th. Is there a worldwide date in which they declare the pandemic? It seemed to follow after March 11th. Okay, so um, so they 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 kind of pro, uh, had it. So I know this is a way different topic, but I just want to address this and, and come back to some of it. Obviously, we had this uh, March. Uh, so it says here the World Health Organization declared the outbreak. So first, it's an outbreak, a public health emergency of international concern on the 30th of January, 2020. And assess the outbreak to had the outbreak, assess the outbreak had become a pandemic on the 11th of March 2020. So that's going to be the World Health Organization that declares that. 
they ended this on the 5th of May, 2023. As of 21st of March, 2024, the pandemic has caused 7 million confirmed deaths. It's not very many. Okay, so so that's where the March 11th date is. Now, if um, so if we count back from March 11th, uh, we come to uh, if we count back 186 days, that is, we go back to September 7th, 2019. September 7th, 2019 is what? Anybody remember the significance of that date? That's going to be when Jeff stands up, comes out of retirement, as, as Iran says there, and he's going to speak against the movement, right? And that's going to be 63 days before November 9th, 2019. So it's interesting that from that date, uh, we get, we count 100 and the 187th day is March 11th. Now, Iran has this Bible indexer. So you're familiar with that Bible indexer. And the number of verses in, uh, the Bible. So that is, I guess, how do we do that? It's, um, well, it's three, 31,102. Is that what it is? Or it's just that if we're counting, how, how does that work around? Yeah, total number of verses in the Bible is 31,102. And March 11th is 3120. So it's just, uh, uh, the zero and the two are s- switched, but it represents, it has the same iteration of numbers. And so now, uh, the other significance of, of, so in Genesis 1, 1, for instance, the, the reverse sum is 777, right? That's what it says here. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, um, there's 1533 verses in, uh, Genesis, right? Yeah. Uh, the lexical sum is 18602. So you got that 186, which is the number of, of days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. And it has the 02 in there. It's the 66th reverse chapter of the Bible or book, you know, book number, reverse chapter. I'm tra- I always have trouble reading how you, the order of these things. Now, where's the 391? Um, how do we deal with that, Iran? So we know that if we count from uh, September 11th and you go back 391 and a half days, it brings you to August 11th, uh, not 2018. And that's just logical because that's 63 days before October 13th, 20, 2018. And that's, I count 391 and a half days from that to November 9th. So the 63 days just is shifted over. But what was the significance of the 391 and a half in connection with March 11th? Or am I not understanding it correct? There's a 391 and a half from August 11th. I forget what year, but it's be, it comes oh, up oh. to September 7th. Okay. So from August 11th in 2018, yeah, there's 391 and a half to September 7th, 2019. And August 11th is connected to a 391, right? Right. And half a month in the original symbol, right? Back to Revelation 9. So, yeah. okay. And it's the same same structure as the Bible because you have a 391.5 that leads up to the 187 last verses of the Bible. Ah, okay. That was the other one. So, So explain that. Well, in the Bible, we already said how many verses there are. It's 30,000. 31,915 um, verses plus 187 verses add up to 31102 verses. So it's 30915? Yes. Okay. So that is. So we have all those number of verses in the Bible, right? You can see there. So 
if we take this number, which is 391.5, but it just has that zero in there, plus 187 is going to give us the number of verses in the Bible. So these two symbols are together. Okay. Now, I know that's a completely different topic, but I just wanted to address it. Now, it there is a connection. So the connection that we had to deal with was this, because um, we were looking at the pandemic, right? We were looking at this, uh, they all tell lies at one table, and we were connecting this to 9-11. So we have um, this number 7979. Now that brought us to, depending on whether we counted it as inclusive or, or cardinal, that was going to bring us to, uh, 2023. Uh, let me see, 2020. I'm just trying to figure this out. 2020. Yeah, 2020. And that was going to bring us to February 27th. So if I go to February 27th, 2020, is that it? No, I'm trying to figure out. No, doing this wrong. No, I think it was 2023. I'm trying to remember what we did. So we had September 11th, and I counted 7979. Okay, that brought me to July 17th, 2023, and then I counted 259 days, which is, okay, that brought me to April 1st. There was something else that brought me to February 27th. What was that? In 2020. So that was another word. Oh, that was 6743. And 6743 was what? Anybody remember what we did? How we got 6743? Maybe it's in my notes. <sighs> yes, that was... Oh, 6743, this was this other word. Okay. That's going to be, uh, shall not prosper. That was the one. Okay. So I got those two mixed up. So 6743, that's going to bring us, uh, by itself. So I'm just trying to figure out what I did there. So 6743, and then I added that from August 1st. Huh. Okay. So 6743 brings me to uh, February 27th, 2020. And then from that date, if I count uh, 3808, right, that's the one that brings me to August 1st, 2030. Okay, now I got it remembered. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I need to put that in my notes as well. So we got the one where we add the two together, shall not prosper. That's going to go from 9-11 to August 1st, 2030. That's going to be the fifth day of the, or first day of the fifth month. So it's another symbol in 2030. And in 2030, we hit the first day of the first month is April 5th, which is the fifth day of the fourth month. And then we have this, uh, shall not prosper, this alliance, right, with the UN. And it's marking the first day of the fifth month in 2030. And we also have the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030 connected with um, this study of uh, the 354 days of 457 BC. Right? So there's two different ways that we can come. We can count the 354 months from 9-11. One will bring us to uh, the first day of the first month in 9-11. Or not, 2030, and the other one will bring us to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. Okay, so just put here from so we have February 27th, 2020 is 6743 days. Okay, so we have the number of days there. So we were looking at that, and then we were talking about the March 11th. Now, uh, there's 13 days from February 27th, 2020. Um, so what does that mean about March 11th, 2020? Can we see that February 27th, Julian, is March 11th, 2020, Gregorian? So if we take the word prosper, 
and we count from 9-11, it's going to bring us to February 27th, 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. But can we see that February 27th, 2020 symbolizes March 11th, 2020, when the pandemic is declared? What happened on February 27th? Nothing. Right. March 11th is the date. Right. February 27th is symbolizing March 11th. And from March and from February 27th, if we count the knot, the 3808, it will bring us to the first day of the fifth month in 2030. So it's going to deal with this. And, and can we see that the, the World Health Organization declaring the pandemic is a result of this union with with spiritualism, right? The United States union with. I can see that. Right. Okay. Sunday law type. Right. Sunday so we can see the height of it prosper. You know, this is this this symbolizes then this unity between what happens at nine eleven and what happens at March eleven. Right? They're 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 connected with this word prosper. But if we count the word not, it's going to bring us to 2030. Okay. So you can see how this connects. Hopefully, hopefully you can understand that. It's, it's not, not super straightforward, but we have had this before where we have a Julian date lining up with a Gregorian date and, and the Julian date is the symbol or the calculation. This is not on a line yet. So put on a line yeah. Yet. Yeah, when we draw these things out, it, it'll make more sense. Yeah. Right. The thing is to get to get the idea here that we have this connection. So, so if we go back to uh, our document, right? So we're saying it shall not prosper. So the speaking lies at one table. What we're taking is this history that precedes the Battle of Actium, this alliance between Octavian and Antony. They're going to speak lies at one table. And we're saying that this is a false alliance that is marked by 9-11. And so we count from 9-11 up the word table. And when we do that, uh, we come to June 17th, 2023. And that's going to be the HESI 2023 Global Forum connected at, at UN Health headquarters, right? It's going to be talking about the recovery from COVID-19 and the full implementation of the 2030 agenda, right? So that's that's the whole purpose of that. So it marks that. So that's why we take this 7979, okay? And then we have um, 259 days further brings us to April 1st, 2024, which is April Fool's Day. And I basically have said that, you know, this whole agenda, the 2030 agenda, is is juvenile right that is the the world economic forum is just a juvenile organization it's a bunch of people who have no practical experience in anything um, they happen to be wealthy you know you got actors and all these types of things but you know people who are out of touch with reality and it's an atheistic or organization so so it ties that together so the lies at one table is is this alliance with the atheistic power that the United States has made on September 11th, right? So we can count these from September 11th. We also have uh, this connection with the UN where it's saying it will not prosper, right? So this speaking lies at one table will not prosper. And, and that's going to give us these symbolic dates that connect us to uh, the pandemic and then to 2030, August 1st, 2030, which is the first day of the fifth month in 2030. So, so that all makes sense. So, so we have this here. So the, the alliance there doesn't last. Neither will this alliance last in the way that it is, right? So the United States has made an alliance with the UN. It's reached its hand across the abyss to spiritualism. But in doing so, the UN has conquered the United States, right? In this context. Yeah. 
But in the end, the United States is going to be the power that brings about, that is the false prophet, is going to bring in the Sunday law. This is not something that the UN was seeking. They, they have their own agenda. Their agenda is going to end. They are going to then submit to the agenda that's going to be put forward by the U.S. See the religious right rising up now. Right. So, and and that's what the, I mean. That's what we've always expected. That something has to happen in the world that will cause a religious Sunday law. Not a, not a Sunday law that's for the environment. Because that's not a Sunday law, is it? It's not, it's not a family day Sunday law. It is a religious Sunday law, correct? In order for Satan and the papacy to have their way, that Sunday law has to be religious. Do we agree on that? Yeah, it's going to have a, a death decree. It'll have a death decree with it. Yeah, it of, and it's a religious matter, Sunday law. Matter, matter of worship. It's yeah, it's a matter of worship. Yeah, exactly, right? And and it's not about worshiping Mother Nature. This is an image to the beast, to the papacy, to the satanic power that we call the papacy. So, so all of these other things about oh, you know, Earth Days types of things and turning it into you know a weekly thing um, that doesn't fulfill the purposes of the Sunday law. It has to be a religious Sunday law, and so that means the world has to wonder after the beast, that they're going to worship the beast and his image. The image is the United States enacting this Sunday law. Okay, so we'll come back to this on Sunday. It'll give time for people to think about the things we've studied today. Uh, consider verse 29, and um, we'll see what, what will happen next week. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and all the things that you teach us. Please be with each person. Watch over them. Guide and direct our steps today. May your angels uh, care, be with those that we love, and help us, Lord, to trust fully in you. Bring us together again to study your word. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.